Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here today and then present my study with everyone uh, about the international uh, education choices of a Vietnamese family. Right, so for today's presentations, I'll uh, take you through the background of the study, uh, some relevant literature and the limitations that I have identified. And, and from that, I present the conceptual model that I've developed. And also, I explain to you the methodologies that I use, um, my data collections, and also at the very end, I'll give you one case example of the, um, the, the interview that I've done so far. Okay, so um, if you look at the pictures here, um, these are taken as some educational fairs in Vietnam. And about six or seven years ago, I'm in a very similar situation. I was looking for my choices to go abroad. Right? And it's not just me, but it is a story of thousands of Vietnamese uh, young people every year uh, because overseas education is a big thing over there. Right? Vietnam is constantly ranked among the top sources for international students. Um, and uh, it's it like, for example, in, in, in the US or in Australia and or even in New Zealand as well. And according to a recent report from HSBC, uh, the Vietnamese people spend around three billion US dollars per year on overseas education. It's up from 1.5 billion US dollars in the 2015. So quite a big jump there in three years. All right. So um, it, it, it's it, it, because this is such an important and, and, and um, significant thing nowadays in Vietnam. So the the, the understanding of how such activities happens is of great interest of me. So uh, I, I want to see that with Vietnam, a, a, an Asian and, and traditional uh, culture, how are such decisions are made and who is actually involved in making such decisions. Right? So uh, that is the, the, the background uh, from which I build up my study there. Right? So that is the how. How, how it actually happens, right? And, 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 and to understand that, I look at some of the relevant uh, literatures there. So I have some theoretical foundations. Some of you may find some similarity there, uh, like the ecological system theory, the uh, co consumer decision making, and also the uh, facilitator and constraints framework, which I'll talk a bit more in the next uh, minutes, right? So. Based on that questions and based on the foundations, I look at how the, the education decisions or the education choice is made in the domestic scenarios. Right? I look at the factor and the decision-making process. Right? And then I bring that into the international context right? because these overseas educations, uh, what happened with the factors and also how, what happened to the processes there. Right? And also because it's targeted in the Vietnamese community, so I have to look at some Vietnamese cultural values and aspects that may have an influence on the behavior. All right. uh, I'll take you through some of very key ones. So this is a college choice uh, uh, factor research of Chapman. So he identified the, the factors that may influence the choice of college of students in the US. It can be internal based from the students, or it can be from outside, like from parents, from friends, from school, to attract him or her into a certain um, university or institutions. Right? And based on that uh, model, um, Hoysler and Gallagher developed a process-based model. So what if now um, a student comes up with a, a desire, an aspiration to study, so he search for information, and then he makes a choice Right, so how such um, factors, the influential factor, influence and affect the process here. So one, two, and three. Right, so it's built up into a process-based model. Right. And now because I'm looking at international education, so I have to take things into that international scenarios there. And when you got into that, you've got a whole bunch of new factors of the home country and the host country, like the both uh, legal, economical, social factors that can influence how people think about the choices of, of overseas education. Right. Okay, so 
in 2007, Chen used all of the aforementioned models to build up the process-based model of the overseas educational choices of, uh, in this case, East Asian students in Canada. Uh, so this is the current uh, literature that uh, I've got so far, um, which is very good, very detailed, but there's some uh, gaps, some critique that I've come up uh, after uh, uh, reading the literature, which is uh, there seems to be uh, a lack of understanding of the undergraduate, which is my um, target subject, because, because this one is of postgraduate. So you have postgraduate students and then undergraduate students. They may have different um, ideas, different experience. So their behaviors may be different as well. Right? And so far, the literature describes the process, the selections process, as one way, linear. So you take certain steps, one, two, and three, and then you finish with the choice, uh, which may be oversimplifying the actual complexity of the process. What if something happened to my visa application? I cannot go to the US. I have to go back and rethink about my plan because obviously the first option doesn't work for me. Right, so it doesn't happen like that. It hasn't been shown like that in the literature. And obviously, so far, the student is seen as the decision-making unit, the key makers in, in, in the process. But for Vietnam, it is a Confucius country with a Confucius uh, heavily influenced and uh, very traditional Asian country. So in this case, maybe not really the students are making the choice, but perhaps the families all together. Right? So based on the questions and based on that understanding, this is my conceptual model. Right? It's still stage one, two, three, and four, but the families here are the key decision-making unit. Right? And then you go through different stage with different factors, but you've got some loop there showing some constraints or some facilitating effect that one thing may, may, may stop you from doing certain thing or uh, one factor can enhance your chances of going to a certain country or certain destinations, right? Okay, so for my uh, methodologies, I want to explore the idea. I want to understand it deeply, so I employ a qualitative approach, right? Um, and because I want my data to be in real time, so I conduct a longitudinal study. Right, so I interview the subject multiple times through our extended period of time. So that while they are actually doing their choosing, while they are thinking about what school and what place should they go. Right? And, and it, I think it's better than if you ask the people who already made their choice, right? already come to New Zealand and ask them, please think about what happened three years ago when you're thinking about your future education. Um, so it, I think it, it's better to ask, actually ask them along the way there. And um, I use personal in-depth interviews in this case because I think it, it worked best for me to explore the idea in, uh, in deep uh, details. Right? And, and my scheduled time is from March to December 2016. And actually, I have uh, finished the first round of data collections in April and I'm currently analyzing the data. And at the same time, I'm conducting my second round of data collections because again, I want to keep updating the information to get new uh, information and new data, all right? So the first, for the first round, it happened all in Vietnam with 24 families. And it's conducted in Vietnamese, obviously. And then I've got the transcriptions and then I translate it back into English before uh, analyzing because I need to work with my supervisor. So I, it has to be in, in English for that purpose. And currently I'm using three um, tasks to, to, to play with my data. Semantic analysis. I have a case summaries for each of the 24 interviews and I also try to draw each families a map, a decision map, much like the conceptual model that I just showed you. All right. Okay, so uh, for now, I'm just going to share with all of you one case study, one, one interview that I had. Um, so this interview was conducted with the family of a year 11 um, high school student in Vietnam, which is 
around year 12 here in New Zealand. Uh, and interestingly, the idea actually comes from the parents, not from the students. Right? And, and, and they share that idea to her, and then she's adopted it. It's it gradually growing and become her aspiration later on. Right? And then they said that the decision to actually go abroad is made by the family as a whole. Right? The, fa the parents agree with it, and then the students also agree with the idea. Right? So it's a collective work. Right? And based on that, they start building up the resources. Right? Parents looking for a way to, to, to save money to, to prepare the finance, and then students try their best to, to, to get the certificate and to study and to perform well to actually make it happen. Right? And I know it's a bit, it is a model, and it, it's, it's the working in progress. And it's, I, I'm sorry it's a bit small, the front, but I'll try to explain it very quickly here. Right, so you've got stage one, two, uh, three, and four. Right, so at the very top, you've got the parents and the students' uh, aspiration and design, wanting to have a better education for their children. Right, and based on that, they start thinking about it and working together. Right? So you've got the, the members involved there, so parents and students there. Right? And at that time, the high school environment of the students have an influence on uh, the, the desire. Right? They, they try to sort of like make the desire clearer and stronger. Right? And after that, they move to the idea of, OK, so now we have to make some choices. Right? The first one is about the major. Again. The family together make the choice of major for her, which is communication. Right? And based on that choice of major, they now look at the options for countries. Where? Right? So at the moment, or at that moment, there are America, Singapore, Finland, Germany, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand uh, were considered. But most of them are eliminated due to different reasons. So only the US survived so far in the choice of um, country. Though it's not final yet, but that is the main, like, sort of number one options for now. Right? At that time of the interview, they haven't actually thought of the uni yet. Though they, they have a list of criteria that they think that they would use when they actually look for universities. For example, like um, the university ranking, the reputations, the cost, and the, um, the availability of the uh, major, and the entry requirements, and the facility, and also the social and uh, uh, cultural, and also uh, climate conditions of the host city as well. Uh, so those are the things that they're going to be using to apply onto different options to select the best uh, uni options for them in the future. Right? And throughout the process, you can see the involvement of parents together with the students is very clear there. They, and then they also get information from different sources there. It can be from their friends, or it can be from a more commercial and official sources like uh, university uh, or education fair. Uh, so those are the channels of information that they employ to get more information for them. So um, obviously, they haven't got to this part yet, so it's still empty there. But I hope to update it later on this year. OK, so that is, that is my current uh, study. And I expect to uh, have a lot more to come from now to maybe December of 2016. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. I like your <laughs> Yes, Andy. Thanks, Ben. I was uh, really interested from my perspective. Uh, one of the issues I come across quite frequently is not so much uh, the country or the university or the degree. Hmm. It is, in fact, the major that you referred to. And I had a student in just last week um, who said, I want to do human resource management, but my family want me to do finance and was under immense pressure to do a finance major, hmm. uh, which you alluded to. So I wondered if you came across situation where there were these conflicts around the major rather than the sort of country and the 
university, because I experienced that with all football. Hmm. Um, especially, there seems to be a perception that finance is going to lead you to a, a very high-paying and uh, prestigious job. Yes, uh, definitely, you're absolutely correct, Andy. Is uh, from my 34 interviews, I've got that. Up, um, like impression as well. For example, I remember one family's um, the, the student wants to study one major, but her parents they they want her to to actually settle down overseas after graduation. So from their perspective, they want her to find a job uh, a job after studying. So the choice of major has to be careful there because it's not only just about studying, but also about be able to work and then stay permanently overseas. Yeah, that conflict is very apparent. Yeah, and, and that also one of the, the focus of my study. I want to see how they actually solve that. What, what, what is the, 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 the process? What is the mechanism that they solve the conflict there? What, what sort of trade-off or exchange they have to take to, to come up with the, the final solution? Yeah. So from your study, what is the impact, the social impact of both uh, types of conflicts between parents and students? Um, it, it, I think the, the idea is here, like I said, I, I want to understand for the Vietnamese people uh, who is actually making the choices for overseas education and how such decisions are made. So for example, if we recognize the, uh, the, the, the parents or the families as the decision-making unit, uh, from, for example, from the, the marketing perspective, the, the way we communicate or the, the subjects for our marketing communication has to be in according to the, the, the subjects there. So you are not, possibly you are not targeting just for the student because the voice of the student may not be critical in Vietnam, for example, but you have to target the families, the parents even in that case. Sorry, my question is uh, already, it seems that there is a, an element of conflict hmm. between the parents and the student in terms of the choice of the major. For example, like you mentioned, HR and finance. So what I'm saying, from your studies, what is the impact of that conflict on the life of the students? Things like suicide, you know, depression, all those things? Oh, that's, uh, I, for now, I will not be looking at the social side of it okay. because my, 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 my discipline is, I'm looking at that from the marketing perspective. Oh. But definitely, I totally agree with you that, for example, if the student has to choose the major that he or she doesn't like, it, it can be some consequences yeah. down the line, I agree. Yeah, but, but uh, it's not, for now, not the, the focus from that angle. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Uh, yeah. Sorry. If we have some time left, can I let the... Sorry, can you say so that again? I don't think it's, it's from that perspective, though. It's, it's just like uh, based on my, the purpose that I want, what I want to get out of this. So I want to get deep. Uh, like insightful and, 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 and detailed uh, information. So based on that, I, and it, it's still uh, uh, um, like a, a new area in, in that sense. So I employ qualitative and deaf interview based on the, the purpose and, and the need of the data at that time, but not really, I, I don't think it's, it, it, it's, it's similar to, to what you just described there with, with the, the Maori community. I think, yeah. Sorry, I think the point is very valid. You are looking at the Vietnam people, their culture. Hmm. Why are you using a, a westernized uh, methodology rather than using a methodology that is understood by the people? For example, I'm looking at Africans. I would hmm. not use a, a westernized methodology. I use, I'm using an Africanized methodology that is understood by my people, by my constituents. So I think the question is very valid. Did you think about it? Um, that, that's, that's a very good point. Hmm. Um, like, for like when we were talking between my supervisor and I, we uh, we we didn't really like base the 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 obviously the the, the cultural aspect there is is important because it's for the Vietnamese people. But uh, 
throughout the, uh, and then we look at the literature as well, and then we see that, for example, the deaf interview with the, like the group interview, it's actually uh, been used for the Vietnamese uh, community before in, in previous like uh, social research, and 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 it's it's actually it's not that kind of strange to 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 sort of like have a, a group discussions, for example, with the 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 like in everyday life. I mean, but. Uh, yeah, in, in, in that sense, when I look at the literature, it's, it's evidence that it's been used before. So it, it gives me some confidence in, 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 in choosing that path. I wonder if uh, the answer is actually embedded in what you said earlier on, though, because you mentioned about the Confucian framework and the influence of the Confucian philosophy on hmm. family values and the decision making. Yeah. So it may be uh, useful to more explicitly uh, uh, bring that out because hmm. it would have affected your approach to the interviews, it would have affected yeah. your approach to the uh, way in which you interpreted what they said and so on. So maybe that's something that should be more overt. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that <coughs> comments and thank you for... And you have so. used the family, you have used the family units and certain things with your units. But that's, but that's not the methodology. That's not the methodology. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, so that, yeah, yeah. The, the reason why I choose family is because based on the, the, the cultural values there of the particular Vietnamese uh, context there. Yeah. Where are the students chosen uh, U.S. Uh, historically, they are the two countries are enemies. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, the U.S. is actually now at the moment is the second uh, option. Like, like with the, the most, uh, second most uh, number of Vietnamese students behind uh, Australia. Yeah, so, so it, it, uh, it, it is interesting to see the, the, the trend there, to see where the, the destinations of, of those people. Yeah. Uh, does banks or financial institutions play a major role in, in deciding who those, uh, how do they fund for their overseas education? Oh yeah, that's, that's also a very interesting uh, question there because according to the, some report, around 90% of the overseas education is self-funded. Yeah. So so, kind of uh, we don't have that in Vietnam. Uh, and, and that does also explain the, 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 the importance of the decisions there, because here you can get like some su su like support from the government. But over there, most of the time, it's the family that support the finance, support the money for the student to go. Yeah. And, 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 and that is a big, a huge amount of money to spend for the family in Vietnam to actually support that decision. Yeah. And um, translations, would you, of, um, interviews, are you going to do translation yourself? Or you gonna... uh, for the questions, uh, I, I used the um, service to translate it into Vietnamese uh, before I, I conducted it. But for the uh, transcriptions uh, due to the time limit, uh, at the moment, I'm just doing it myself to, to make sure that uh, my supervisor and I have enough time to actually play with the data and then like actually digging some insights on, yeah. from that. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, well uh, thank you so much thank for you. your uh, presentation on behalf of the University of Operated Center. And I'd like to present you a small token. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you.